Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to mix the paint that you need to go onto rubber things because it's gotta be elastic. And so it's very simple. We start with house paint. And I mean, go to the paint store and buy a can of house paint. Uh, you can pick exactly the color you want and have them mix it for you. And you might keep that information in case you liked it. Oh, this worked good for flesh or whatever. But you can just get the color wheel, say I want that green, they mix it, and that'll be the color of your monster. Then you'll need water, and you'll need mass making latex, and you'll need to make sure it's not facial latex with a lot of adhesives and stuff. Mass making latex, it's available on the internet. Lots of people uh, have it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix equal amounts of all three with one caveat. All right. So make sure your paint's stirred up well. All right, so this is a flesh color and you just, it doesn't matter. These could be quartz, they could be little teeny things. It doesn't matter. It's just that they're equal. So in goes the house paint. Now it's very important that the house paint be indoor house paint because I think the outdoor stuff has some chemicals to fight against the sun that, eh, they're just not good to breathe. At least that's my understanding. All right, then one part latex. And one part water. Now, this is the only one that can vary. Based on our latex um, thickness, I usually go a little less but you can go full. Now, if I'm gonna run them through an airbrush, I'll go third to third to third. If I'm running through a quartz sprayer, it can handle a little thicker material. And then you don't have to worry about dripping so much. Um, you don't have to worry about it too much, but if you got it on thick, it could drip or whatever. So that's it. But if you mix a third to third to third, you're in good shape. And that will give you the magic formula. And this is what we've used for 40 years. And I, there are lots of other ways to do it. And you can try them all. This has just worked great for us. It's um, super non-toxic. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's latex from the rubber tree plant. It's uh, house paint, uh, which is, you know, they have to make that stuff safe and water. And there you have it. This is what we base everything with. And it works great because it's half paint and half rubber. You can stretch like crazy. The next thing I want to show you just quickly is to get a, a quartz sprayer like this. Now this works just fine. I don't want that to be a stumbling block. That's some, <laughs> I don't want to be like, I got to buy $500 for the equipment to make a monster. Oh no. These are cheap and they'll work just fine, uh, but this is better. And these things, that we used to spend 160 bucks each for these things and, and they would fall once and break. And these are now like $20 and they're awesome. And it's just a, a suction thing. When the air comes out, it pulls the paint. You can adjust the, um, the pattern from a circle to a, a fan and the amount of paint that comes out, the amount of air pressure down here. And what we do is put a, um, a coupler on like this so that you can just do this and you're good to go. The, the thing is with this, you want to, um, uh, put that on so that like, say you have several colors. Now we have like dozens. <laughs> so I have a paint can for every color. It's just very fast to go between colors and change colors. Okay. So that is what we use for paint. You pour it in, always shake it before you use it. I just shook it so I don't have to, but, um, cause it will settle out, especially, well, paint always does, but especially when you have the water in there, it'll settle out um, 
and needs to be kept shaken up. So that is the magic formula. And um, I don't know, it's, there's, like I say, there's lots of different ones, but so, sometimes they're kind of toxic, like rubber cement paint and stuff. I'm sure this stuff works great. This isn't the only way to do it. It's the only way we do it. So that's why I'm telling you. So that's your foundation. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick thing about inks. Now, so they're always based in rubber and uh, uh, latex. And then the first thing we do, especially on really nice paint jobs, is we will do a rub out. And the rub outs, usually we use 70% rubbing alcohol. Now we've, as of late, we've had trouble getting it. And because uh, in a big run, we can go through, oh, I don't know, a gallon and a half or something. You go to the store with a shopping cart. Oh no, you can buy one. <laughs> so we discovered corn alcohol corn alcohol works just as good so if you're having trouble getting isopropyl 70 percent isopropyl alcohol corn alcohol works and i don't even know where you buy this we just found a guy that had a 50 gallon drum we bought it so either one this applies to and so what we do is we'll take say a, a bottle this could be either one and for a rub out, let's say for a, a flesh, I'm gonna give you the formula for flesh. So flesh, we use red, which is flame red, and this is FW paint. Uh, FW, there's some other ones out there and I think they work fine. The, the problem is you can't mix them, I discovered one time. I tried to use FW with something else because we'd run out and went to a local store. Didn't work. So I would stick with FW, we do. And um, so here's the formula to do, um, always shake them. And, and you have to shake hard, especially white. Um, so to do a quart, and you can extrapolate this down or up. I use one whole bottle of flame red. And let's see, I. I usually do by the gallon, and then it needs 15 extra. Now that's some exciting video right there. All right, then um, brown 12 of these, just the dropper fulls. and black is five. Okay, then you just shake it up and this gives you a nice reddish, brownish, it's not super red, it's not super brown uh, and and that's very nice for flesh colored things. Now, if you're doing something that's gray or uh, brown or something, you might wanna do a brown rub out and you'd use much more brown, less red, uh, but still a lot of red with, and this is antler brown, by the way, flame red, antler brown, and black. Uh, you'd use more brown, less red, and you might beef up the black because it's how dark you want to go. And, and let's say you were doing some snow beast or something, you need a blue rubber up. Well, you do, you blue, you might mute with black, a uh, gray rub out. We use like one bottle of white, one bottle of black per quart, and you get a nice gray. Uh, so that's just something you'll have to experiment with, get a look you like, but that is, how we mix the rub out. Now, these same inks we use for detailing and eye colors and things. And we thin all of them. We'll thin them half and half. So if we're gonna do a black and we're gonna run it through an air gun, it'll be half 
isopropyl alcohol, 70%, or corn alcohol, and then half the ink, and it flows nicely and, and comes out of the airbrush great. And so if I went blue detail, maroon, green, now when it comes to white, that's a different story. We never thin the white because we want that to be opaque. So like if I've done an eye and I want to go in there with a color, then I'll take the, the other colors of inks to make blue. I would just add some blue until it looks about right. Usually I mute those colors a little with black so it's not poster color. And you get the color you want. You spray that on, so white's a little different. You know, it's the same with watercolor. Watercolor, you know, they blend and mix and stuff, but when it comes to white, man, you leave that stuff alone. So, um, and be sure and shake the white good. So that's the foundation of our rub out, and then that gives you all the wrinkles and, and shapes, and then you come in and you haze and um, so forth. For gloss, if it's eyes, we use um, Devcon, um, uh, five minute clear epoxy. You can get it like this and that's uh, good. It's like a twin hypodermic needle or you can get the bigger bottles which we like to do and but like if you're doing mouths or fingernails that's too glossy. It doesn't look right and it's also can get cracked and things. So like for fingernails we use this or mouths and this is Liquitex uh, gloss medium get it at art stores and, um, and, and it flexes, which is great. Right out of the bottle, you can use this stuff. You don't need to thin it at all. Um, this stuff is more of the same kind of thing, except it's thick, it's a gloss gel. And so we get the gloss gel and we mix it with food color. Now we buy these big bottles. You might be going to the grocery store and getting something this size. These come in smaller sizes too. They're fairly pricey. But to make blood, we just, it's just food color and, and uh, this gloss gel till it's about the right thickness. And um, uh, that's kind of by eye. And, and then if you want to get sophisticated, you can take food color and use drops of blue and green to get different, uh, like fresher or more oxidated. I don't usually do this. I usually, the only color I'll add is black, which you can buy black food color at Halloween time at, you know, the department stores like Walmart. Okay, and I'll say this, because I found out about this from Alan Hobbs, who has Still Beats, Still Beats Studios. That is another great resource. If you like this kind of information, I would go to Alan Hopps Stilt Beast Studios. And he does so many videos and shows you so many things. And, uh, and he tests stuff and so forth. We've got our ways of doing things. And, um, but he experiments and so forth. So I would highly recommend that site for, you know, details. But anyway, moving along. Um, the once the rub out is sprayed on and again i don't want to i don't want to put up barriers you can spray the rub out on after it's based now the base has to dry give it you know an hour or two uh, on a fan with a fan maybe 30 minutes after that base coats dry with the latex then you spray on and we use a quart sprayer like this um, you spray on the um, rub out which i just showed you how to mix and then you let that dry a little and rub it off with a sponge that's just in the in the either corn alcohol or uh, isopropyl alcohol whichever you decide to use and squeeze it out and rub it off and that's that is it that is the foundation of how we paint that's everything that's the super gloss the semi gloss the blood the coloring the base if you get that down man you can you can do anything you want with your monsters so uh that is it and uh we will see you next time
dude. I'll keep what little brains I've got left. Scram.